righty. What's up, everybody? Just about ready here. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see me. Give me a little thumbs up action. Um, yeah. Hanging out today on this Sunday afternoon here on the East Coast. And for some of you, it is freshly noon out on the West Coast. So, uh, yeah, just give me a little thumbs up. Let me know that we are all good and we can get started here. Got to say hey to a few people here in the chat. Yeah, I think my mic levels are all good. Let me just confirm very quickly. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're probably okay here. Beautiful. What's up, Nick? Good to see you. Um, so who do we got in the, in the chat? Mr. Whiskey Shits, good to see you, my friend. Bourbon, uh, should I stop in for this live? Well, that would be great. Oh, stop in. Passing Cleveland in about an hour. <laughs> I'm in Columbus, or else I would say, sure, swing on by. That would be hilarious. Um, Shane Long, good afternoon. Nice to see you. Lito, good to see you as well. JG is in the house. Whiskey cheers. Um, good luck hunting today, Bourbon. Are you are you out hunting? Bourbon hunting right now? AV All Good says Nick. We got some thumbs up on the way to check Soldier Barracks, says Lito. Have fun with that. Um, all righty. Well, we've got a couple of people in here. Usually these um, these Sunday lives don't have quite as many as the Thursday nights, and that's totally understandable. It's a little early to be drinking. So I'm going to do my best to kind of um, restrain myself, only have a couple of little pours for this Second Chance Sunday. This is the second one of these that I have done. I think the first time, what was I re-reviewing? Stag Jr. 15 and Yellowstone 2020, and that was a split decision. The Stag Jr. was incredibly... Um, you know, different, so much better after the neck pour, whereas the Yellowstone still totally sucked. And today, I'm going to be taking a look at three different pours here. They're not all bourbon. Um, we have the Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye. We have Ezra Brooks 99 Proof and Larceny A121. So that's the plan to go through these. I'm going to start with the Ezra Brooks 99, kind of check it out. I remember some of what I said on my video about that go to the Larceny next, just kind of move up the proof ladder, and then we're going to end with the absolute monster here, the Alberta Premium. And it's, uh, you know, it's worth noting, too, that I gave unfavorable reviews to the first two, but the Alberta Premium I actually liked a good bit, but I wasn't sold on, like, the insane hype that everybody had for it. I have not tried it since I made the video a month, six weeks ago, so I'm going to be curious to see how that one has kind of developed, you know. Um Maybe maybe I am. I don't know where I. <laughs> uh, yes, need to be in Lexington tonight. Oh, okay. If you're going to be in Lexington, if you're close to Cleveland, then you're yeah you'll pass through. Um, it will be interesting to see if you still don't like the 99. Yeah, I'm curious too, and I'm going to be a little biased. I'm because I don't like super nutty whiskeys. I know it's got some some um, like that not nuts, more like Cracker Jack notes in the 99. So we'll kind of see if that's different. Um, the Ezra Distillers Collection, I believe, the 107 proof that was in my blind flight from Will Henderson the other day when I was on with Scott for my bourbon journey, that one shocked me. It was actually a great pour. Still too nutty for me, but like objectively speaking, it was a great whiskey. And I had I couldn't believe it was Ezra Distillers Collection. So that was kind of hard to believe. I thought it was the old Ezra 7 maybe. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the plan right now. What else? Let me think about this. Oh, yeah. I just got done um, editing my Elijah Craig A121 review. That's going to come out in the next two hours. Basically, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to hit the upload button, make the thumbnail, and probably by 5 p.m. Eastern time, that will be up on the channel. So check that out if, you, uh, if you're if you curious about A121. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, I put it next to a couple of my favorite Elijah Craig Barrel Proof batches just to see how it stacked up. And that's what I've been doing with the Larceny and the Stag Juniors just to see the batch variants, what's going on there. Um, so that video is about, I don't know, 20 minutes long or something, which is pretty standard for, you know, a, a big comparison like that. So that's kind of what is going on today. Lido says, I love the Alberta Premium. Yeah, I'm excited to try it again here and to work my way up to the proof. When I recorded the video, I went whole hog, first pour of the night with that stuff, and it blew me out of the water. And yeah, I've also heard this as well. So I'm, I would be curious to try that other batch. I don't know if I would ever have the opportunity to do that. Hey, if you're hanging out right now, please like the video. Let's get a couple more people in here as this afternoon goes on. But I think we can go ahead and get started. Yeah, Elijah Craig A121. 
I have a Bell Mead comparison I shot last night as well, so that should come out probably on Tuesday. It's going to be comparing the new cask or the new edition with the older cask strength release. Obviously, those are different batches, but interesting comparison there between those two. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, Ezra Brooks 99 proof and see how this thing is stacking up. Let me know if you are sipping on anything, which I don't expect many of us are. Let me know if you have something in your glass. What you're up to this beautiful Sunday. It's a really nice day here in Ohio. It's still cold. There's still tons of snow on the ground outside. But it's probably the nicest day that we've had in quite a while. So, ah, all right. So, yeah, just for the old fact sheet, again, this is 99 proof Ezra Brooks. Um, what was the age on this thing? Seven years? Does that sound right? I feel like that's a little too old. I'm not entirely sure the, the age on this thing. I might have said it in my previous video, but I can't remember. That's okay. We don't need to know that for today. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, okay, I like this nose a little bit more than last time. The one thing to note here is the price point. This is 25 bucks off the shelf, as long as you're not getting gouged somewhere, whereas the typical Ezra Brooks is about $12, $13. Um, so for a 99 proof for at 25 bucks, something that's going to be widely available, just the actual specs of the bourbon is pretty cool. You know, it's, it's very accessible and, and everything like that. Watching Whiplash for the millionth time today. Background. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, that movie's funny. That's like a, it's basically a sports movie. Remove football, insert drums, you know? Oh, Sarah, Sarah's behind on her googly eyes. You got to put the H in there. She's going to, she's going to get pissed. Um, yeah, I actually threw some googly eyes on new bottles yesterday for the videos I recorded, but I haven't gotten the rest of these. So we're going to flip the bottles and, um, and uh, twist the corks you know, wet the corks basically here in the next couple of days. And I told her she's got to get, we got to get back on it and, and googly eye all these things. What's up, Joe? Cheers to you. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I'm, it's, it's a lighter nose on this 99 proof. Still a little bit of ethanol on the, on the top here. Nice light caramel. The Cracker Jack note or, the, or like the nuttiness is not popping out of the glass as much as I remember this from the video that I recorded, which I like. <laughs> she might be watching. I don't know, honestly. Okay. Great. So the one thing that is really sticking out to me now that I didn't get the first time that I tried this Ezra Brooks 99 is the amount of cinnamon on here. Um, I might have mentioned baking spices last time or something, but it is really, really heavy on the cinnamon. Like, I don't know, it's kind of shocking, actually. And it feels like for a $25 product, even if you're not getting the best mouthfeel by, you know, the standards that you would want to have for like your ultimate great pours, at $25, even if you reduce the mouthfeel a little bit, at least there's enough spice kick to keep it interesting as, you know, as a sipper, as an everyday option. Yeah, oh my God, it, it smells like a cinnamon red hot now on the nose. I, I don't know how I missed this last time, or maybe it took some air in the bottle. Holy cow, and that kind of covers up some of that nuttiness in here. Yeah, just some honey in there as well. It's almost like you get sort of a honey roasted peanut or honey roasted cracker jack note with cinnamon red hots. I still can't help but taste freshly cut grass on the front of the palate with this though. And I'm that might be what it's like manifesting as for me. And maybe that's not exactly the tasting note, but it's something that just reminds me of like right after you mow the lawn, that's kind of what I'm tasting. It's very interesting. And it was really off-putting the first time, but now that there's a lot more cinnamon in here, which could be me, it could be the bottle opening up, it's it's definitely improved. And and I'm I appreciate this a lot more than I did. Brian, greetings. Good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping in. JG says, better as a mixer or neat. 
I don't know. I think like the the one thing I'll say about this this bottle is that um, I think if you're looking for something at a decent proof at a low price and you're not trying to go for like that wild turkey like the Russell's Reserve Ten character, um, if you want something a little bit more intense than Buffalo Trace. What else is there in this price range? I'm trying to kind of look over at my shelf. Like, basically, I don't feel like we necessarily needed this addition to the lineup, but the more that I'm sipping on it now, the more I kind of appreciate what it is. And for somebody who can't find this particular flavor profile, the closest thing might be like a Knob Creek 9, 100 proof. Um, but this comes in under that cost. So, and it's a little bit lighter on the palate. I think it's it's got a place for sure, and it's going to attract people because of the price point, even if they sacrifice the quality of the poor, I, I think. Yeah, this is the thing that's confusing me a little bit, is this cut grass note, and I haven't seen anybody else mention this yet. I might be crazy. My palate might be broken, but I, I, can't, I can't get away from it. Let me have another sip. Um, JG, I never answered you. For me, I think this is going to be a solid mixer, uh, especially if you can play on some of the flavors in here, like the cinnamon component. If you can play with that or even some of that like Cracker Jack nuttiness, I think you could really make a cool cocktail out of this. And hopefully it would be a cheaper option in a cocktail, you know, like a lower price, but still solid thing. Like you don't need to throw Eagle Rare in your old fashions because so many bars overcharge Eagle Rare. But if you could find this and make a, make a cool cocktail out of it, you might be able to pair some like walnut bitters you know, something like that. I think I think you could do some cool things here. I like the KC9, so tempted to try this for a cheaper version. Yeah, I don't have um I don't have the small batch. I only have the single barrel reserve, the shelf version of the single barrel 120 proof. So I can't do that comparison right now, unfortunately. I I just haven't spent the money on the small batch recently for whatever reason. All right, let me try another sip. This might be the last sip of the Ezra 99. Mm. I'm sorry, there's <laughs> there's cut grass in here. And and one funny thing that I saw the other day, there was some discussion, maybe either on Reddit or maybe in the Bourbon Junkies Facebook group, where people were talking about Heaven Hill and Buffalo Trace mentioning that sometimes with some of their barrels, they get a grassy note and they try to blend that out or try to you know not offer those barrels as single barrels, mentioning specifically a grass note from some of those and other people were kind of like debating it and going back and forth but I, I, I don't know it, it kind of makes me feel more confident in the fact that I'm tasting cut grass on here besides that one off-putting flavor it's a delicate pour with a lot of cinnamon kick but the actual profile itself besides the spice is delicate it's going to be a solid option at 25 bucks and I'll stick by my original video that says we didn't really need it. Nobody would have said like, hey, I really wish we had a delicate 99 proof, but cinnamon forward um, nutty sipper at 25 bucks. But the fact that it's out there, it's okay. And I think it's going to gain some traction, um, especially in terms of the value category. So for what it's worth, those are my thoughts here. We're going to move on. Um, Wait, Master, I haven't seen that Ezra 99, but really... Dick Nicholson Black Label. I haven't had any of the Nicholson stuff, to be honest with you. Be curious to try it. Same thing with, like, Johnny Drum. I don't think I've ever had any of the Johnny Drum stuff either. So a few of those bottles, a lot of, like, the Bards, um, the Willet stuff, I think Old Bardstown. Some of those other bottlings on the lower end of things I haven't tried. I need to go and basically, like, raid the store and bring 250 bucks and buy all the low, you know, bottom shelf options and do some reviews of those. Lito, you're totally right. Thank you for reminding Everybody reminding me, please hit the like button if you're hanging out today. Um, yeah, let's get some more people in here. Just curious about this revisit because I like the larceny. Oh, yeah, so we're going to go to larceny next. And, yeah, I saw um, I saw that you had just put up some videos, and I need to check those out. So congrats on congrats on that. I don't know. I think that's a new thing, right, um, putting out videos. Let me, let me know. But I believe I saw it on maybe Instagram. Got both J-Drum and Nickel 100. I can get you. Oh, sweet, Nick. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to try some of those. Black licorice note I don't like. I've heard this before as well about some of the lower-level Willet offerings. I don't like 
Noah's Mill. I've never had Rollins Creek. I don't really care to after having Noah's Mill, to be honest with you. But I'd be curious about the, the lower level offerings. I don't like licorice either unless it's really carefully in a rye whiskey and it's not overdone. But, you know. Okay. Well, cool. So, sort of changing my mind maybe 50% on the Ezra 99, which is a good thing. Uh, I, I'm not going to be sipping it every day here and, you know, in my house, but I think for other people, um, I, maybe next time I make a video like that, I need to really think more objectively about it as opposed to comparing it to other things in my mind, really think about the price point. So, all right, next glass, we're going to get out the Larceny A121. Oof, that was obnoxious. Right. Let's see. Nicholson Black is better than the weeded white label. Okay. I didn't know the white label was weeded. Uh, Ezra 99 equals early morning, early morning spring tea ball after a fresh infield cut while chewing Big Red. Holy shit. <laughs> that might be exactly correct. <laughs> that is unusual. Nick, you know, now that you say that, and I go back to the empty glass, there is an earthiness in that when I'm kind of talking about kind of the Cracker Jack note or the freshly cut grass, it all kind of combines into an, a damp earthiness. That is, dude, you got to write the tasting notes for that bottle. Holy cow. Uh, no, we're, we're just now getting there, actually. Thanks for jumping in. I just poured this in my glass, so we are about to get into the Larceny re-review here. Whiskey while out hiking, just next. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, when I go outside, I'd be curious to know from you guys in the chat before I get to Larceny. Do you, when you go outside, like my glass, I can't get the outside smell out of my nose and out of the glass. So when I'm trying to smell whiskey outside, it's almost like useless. I can only really taste it because I'm so overwhelmed by scents outside. And I have a really sensitive nose to things like that. If you're cooking in the house, I can't really smell whiskey. Is that something that um, that you guys deal with? Same thing for cigars. Like when I have whiskey and cigars, I may as well not be drinking whiskey for me. Um, and maybe I just haven't done that right. But I feel like my my nose just gets overwhelmed. I don't know. Just in time. Yeah, yeah, just in time. I love the easy uh, Ezra distillers. I need to get one of those. And I actually want to try the Rebel Yell distillers collection too. Having now tried the Ezra one in that in that blind flight. Patrick says Old Bardstown for, ooh, borderline undrinkable. Yeah, all the more reason that I'm probably not going to buy a bottle and just try to get a sample from, from Nick. I think, Nick, you might have said you had that. <laughs> oh, no, you have Jade, uh, you have Drum and Nickel, so maybe I'll need to find someone else to give me a sample. Uh, yeah, you know, Jay, I think that's part of the whole deal here for me is, like, just being honest. I'll talk to you guys a little bit later in this live stream about something that's kind of bothering me that I would love to make a video of, but I need to kind of crowdsource opinions. I still smell it well, but it does smell different. Way less of the sweetness. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, Larceny A121, my review for this was really bad, honestly. Especially because I I put on the tunnel vision, put on the blinders, and only compared this to the other Larceny barrel-proof releases from 2020. And this was far and away the thinnest and the most messy and weird profile of the bunch. I don't tend to like any of these releases, to be honest. This made C920 seem like a godsend, and A120 seem exceptionally balanced and well put together, which are things I would have never said, <laughs> having not compared it to this release. So, you know, for me, this was not good. It, it's too watery, it just disjunct. And I heard that Fred Minnick did a tasting the other night, blind, of barrel proofers, and this came in last place. So, not great. <laughs> but I've, again, I get hate mail when I make these negative reviews and it kind of cracks me up. So yeah, whatever. Um, some people tend to like this or they just like the fact that they spent 50 bucks and they feel like they need to uh, have positive thoughts about it. So whatever. All right. After the, um, and obviously this is going to taste pretty good compared to the Ezra. Just because it's going to be a little more of a bold profile. So maybe I should pour a different batch to compare this with. Um, let me grab one. It's just right here. Yeah. Yeah, let's grab A120. 
And let's try to put this next to A120 in just a second. I have an extra glass here. All right. A121. Hmm. Yeah, it's a um, pretty nice nose right now. It doesn't smell like a weeded bourbon at all. That's always kind of been my problem with these Larceny Barrel Proofers. Right now I'm getting a ton of cherry, a ton of dark cherry. Nice, nice little alcohol punch on the nose, but right now it's not off-putting, so. Huh. All right, let me go in for a sip and then I'll revisit this. Ooh, golden hour. We're getting a little sun coming in here. Sorry if I start, my face turns to a ghost. <laughs> Okay. Um, this to me was just like, oh God, yeah, let me turn my brightness down. <laughs> okay, maybe that's going to be better. Yeah, this to me is just like um, down the middle, straight up bourbon profile, like nothing unique about that first sip. There's a ton of spice in my mouth right now, a lot of pepper spice. It's kind of hanging on in the back of the throat. The nose was all cherry. As I come back now, I'm definitely getting more caramel and like um, milk chocolate going on. Let me check out the chat here real quick. I made Larson A121. It was definitely like a Snickers and definitely like a Snickers and didn't last two weeks. Okay. Yeah, my A120, when I compared it to this A121, almost had like a green apple note on the top. Uh, hey, I told you that, right? Um, I'm not sure what you're for. Uh, I think you left me a Oh, did you leave me a comment on a video earlier? I, I, I don't even know if I replied yet, honestly. I've been kind of offline for the last couple of uh, days here. Yeah, I would... I, look, I, would, I wouldn't pop it. If you're not offended by... If you don't have FOMO, you know, then, then get rid of it. That's, that's what I would say. Like, hopefully, you know, if, you, if you're not a big fan of the other ones, then this one is definitely not going to rock your world. The other ones are better, I think. Okay, yeah, and I think context is important here. And maybe maybe my video shouldn't focus on that side-by-side -side aspect. I don't know. Maybe I should do one solo and one with a side-by-side. -side. Who knows? Yeah, Peter, I think I just mentioned this a couple minutes ago. That's I didn't watch the video, but I saw this um, online, like a comment about it, that it came in last place. Oh, that's what um, – where, where was it at uh, over here? Yes, you did tell me this. That was in the comment. Uh, on that YouTube thing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then last by a mile from what I understand. Interesting. So some of them don't hold up in side-by-sides, but some pours, uh, you know, you just need to have on their own and some, you know what I'm saying. Anyways. Yeah, still sort of a peanut fest in here. Camera's having a hard time auto-focusing. Sorry, everybody. Peanut fest in here, but I'm actually getting a nice bit of oak now on this A121, which I like. A little bit of oak funk. Definitely um, definitely less peanut than when I first cracked it, though. So right now, I'm getting heavy chocolate, heavy oak, decent bit of caramel. It's still lighter. It's still a little bit more watery, but I, I don't mind it. Obviously, coming from the Ezra 99, I could be biased right now. But on the palate, it's just really thin and aggressive. Like, I think that's kind of my issue with it. The nose is not so bad. I, I, qu I quite like the nose today. But on the palate, it, it's not rich and viscous and heavy on the mouth. And I know sometimes we don't want that. But it, it's just, it's almost like the whiskey it's, is copping out. Or they copped out when they blended this batch and just said like, hey, We'll put a $50 price tag on something that's going to hit them up front with spice and aggressiveness and then never really develop and thicken out in the palate. So it has a, a good pop on the front end and a long finish, but everything else is not put together. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking right now. Russell's, uh, yeah, that's a must grab for sure. 
totally depends on the where uh, the warehouse, you know, where where the pick is from and all that good stuff, which I don't know enough about to be super specific. But um, everybody in the chat here, a lot of them could help you with that. I am going to be putting like eight different Russell's picks in some sort of blind here soon and, and doing a big live stream about that. That'll probably be mid-March or something. Yeah, this is this is it. Oh, the only pick I had was worse. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, some people that pick these barrels don't know shit about picking barrels, though. <laughs> uh, hey, Emily Chambers, good to see you. How are you doing? What glass is that? These are the, they're called Highland Nosing Glasses on Amazon. Um, yeah, just look up Highland Nosing Glass. You'll you'll find these. I've got a bunch of new glasses on the way, too. I'm trying to collect a ton of them so my video can be really, really put together and accurate. A121. You don't have to hold back. Some of us like it. Totally agree. It is, yeah, this one's definitely watery and thin. Let me put the uh, A120 next to it. Just kind of see what we what we get here. Need to refill my A121 just a bit. I just saw a comment that is kind of funny, um, and I totally understand. Wigmaster says, thin and aggressive sounds like an oxymoron. I don't think so. I think the aggressiveness comes from the spiciness, not necessarily from the mouthfeel. It could come in many forms. You know what I mean? Like a whiskey could be really... Uh, take like um, some of the Bardstown Discovery series. Those things are so full and viscous. They're aggressive in that way. They're not necessarily like overproofed or just hitting you with alcohol. It's like the mouthfeel and the entire heaviness that's aggressive and the flavor prof The flavors are just hardcore. Whereas this lacks a lot of the flavor substituting it for alcohol and spice. That's what I would say. Camp Nelson F for Russell's, I think. I've heard, uh, yeah, I've heard some things about, about that as well. I'm not entirely sure, you know, which ones are the good ones. Uh, cool Running says, good evening, everyone. Slancha, yeah, cheers to you. So A121 is over here. Now let's go to A120. Yeah, A120, there it is again. There's this lighter, crisp green apple note on the top. And I'm going to be curious to see how the mouthfeel compares. Here we go. A120 on the palate. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A120 has... It's way more put together. It comes in waves in the palate. You know what I mean? It's not just an initial hit up front and then nothing and then the finish. This hits you up front and then the caramels rush in. And then the cinnamons rush in. Then it transitions to the back, you know, back palate into the finish. That A120 is a significantly better pour. It's hotter for sure. We are, um, let's see, we are about 4% higher ABV here. But, hey, A120 is in a different league, and I still am not even a big fan of it. <laughs> so A121 for me, I don't know. I don't know. Jay says, I like those. Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, I like them a lot. And I don't know what you think about this, but for me, they diffuse the alcohol just a little bit better than a Glen Cairn so that I can get more into the flavors. Uh, the Glen Cairns tend to smack me in the face a little bit. I love to learn something, but no picks can be makers all day. Yeah, I'm not even a big makers fan, to be honest, but uh, I would take it over Larceny, I think. <laughs> Yeah, and I think you're right, too. They are totally different profiles. For me, For me, like the quintessential weeded profile is just Weller, and I hate that. I don't mean to hype an overhyped brand, but but like especially some of the older bottlings from the early 2010s, you know, before the label redesign and all that, that was some really good stuff. And then if you go back to the Stitzel Weller, that shit was incredible. But nowadays, it seems like all of the Larceny stuff, it basically just tastes like a slightly different Elijah Craig. Some of it tastes like it has rye in it because it's so spicy. Like this A121 that I just tasted, I would never, ever know that that was a weeded bourbon. I would I would always guess that it has between 12 and 15% rye, without a doubt. So, you know, for what that's worth. But I don't have that issue with the Glencairns. Okay, yeah, I mean... For me, it's just like, maybe I just got used to these glasses, to be honest with you, early on. <sighs> Dang, man. Yeah. And, and the A121 from Larceny is really, really sweet. 
now that I compare it to the A120, it's got a really distinct sugary note to it, you know? Mm. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. Larceny for me is still a miss. Still a big miss. And I probably am going to sit out the next release of this. Unless it's like 68% ABV or something. One thing I was talking to Jason Calori at Mash and Drum about was just the, the entry proof of these larcenies. Because I can't understand why it's missing that weeded profile that I would expect. And I don't think they... I don't think the entry proof here is any lower. And typically a weeded bourbon is going to have a lower entry proof um, when you put it in the barrel. So maybe that could be part of it. Who knows? Hendo, what's up, man? Good to see you. And Trev is in the house. Thanks for popping in, guys. Hope, you, hope you're doing well. Having a good weekend here. Beautiful Sunday. I don't know about where, you, where you're at. Uh, I know the South is still reeling from this, this craziness. But here in Ohio, it's a, a decent day, which is nice. I have not tried Old Elk yet, Mr. Whiskey Shits. This is the one that I've been so curious about. Uh, I think Jason mentioned Fruity Pebbles. A couple other people mentioned some fruitiness. I like fruitiness, so I would love to try that. Columbus Bound. <laughs> Stop on by. That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. If I didn't have to practice right after this for the next several hours uh, for an upcoming concert, I would say stop by. But things are crazy right now. I probably shouldn't even be drinking at this point. <laughs> okay, guys. Just got done in the gym. Yeah, getting swole. Trev is Mr. Swole. It is. Yeah, so it's absolutely beautiful. Nice. Okay. Last pour that I that I want to check out right now, unless you know there might be another one that pops up thought about having a little sip of this Chattanooga rye. You can see I haven't really gotten into this very much. Be curious to try it. If there's a couple minutes at the end, maybe I'll do that. But let's go ahead and try this Alberta Premium. Right now, I'm kind of one-to-one. -one. Ezra 99, I'll give that some credit. It has a place in the market, um, even though we didn't necessarily need it. It's going to be a great option for certain people who want that flavor profile at an increased proof. And it's going to be a great mixer. So... going on here something about naked trev that took me a sec i don't get fruity pebbles just <laughs> moose pits <laughs> that's hilarious how was zumba class for trev <laughs> that's hilarious Hey, hey, Roscoe, is this for me? Like, who do I play with? Or are you talking about somebody else in the chat? Wow, that Alberta is something else. Holy crap. What a... I mean, that's a barn burner. That's a, that's a high-proof beast. You know, the last time I, I tasted this, the things that I can remember from the Alberta Premium were like high doses of ethanol, tons of vanilla, um, some green rye spice in there, a little bit of like spearmint or pine, um, and some black pepper for sure, definitely from that rye. That's what I kind of remember in my head. But right now, once you get past like this really thick vanilla, almost like vanilla icing or vanilla custard, some sort of note on the top here, along with that really heavy alcohol punch, once I get past that, I'm getting some nice fruits, like not necessarily apple. It could be more like apricot and pear sort of sitting in the background. Oh, yeah, some there, there might even be strawberry on this Alberta premium. I don't know. I don't know about you guys if you would agree or disagree with that. Definitely something fruity in the background. It's the bourbon junkies mentioned something about it being kind of breakfasty. I guess I could see that in some ways. Oh, is the is Trev not a wrench? <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm gonna wrench you, man. Give me just a second. If you're cool with that, well, here I'll just do it anyways. You have the freaking bourbon wrench. 
sorry that the one day that I made wrenches on the channel when I was like talking to people about it and couldn't figure it out, I wrenched like eight people and that was the end of that. <laughs> Mm. God, that is so spicy. Wow. That's good. That's just good. You know, I was lukewarm about this Alberta premium on my first video. I didn't quite understand it because I'm not big into Canadian rise. Holy crap. Yeah, it's just like if you if you want to be challenged by by a whiskey, just pick this thing up. You know, <laughs> it's definitely a mood pour. I'll never let you down, Cam. <laughs> That's hilarious. And you said that I'm the uh, drummer for Metallica and Wigmaster said Avenged Sevenfold. That's hilarious. No, what I do is much more boring than that. I actually timed him out in here last time, DC. That's hilarious. You're, uh, I like mine. She's, but that's hilarious. Mm. Yeah. So there's sort of like a syrupy note in here. I, I might've said this last time, like maple syrup. It's like if you drizzled apricots, strawberries in maple syrup, but they're just covered in black pepper, you know, and, and cinnamon, like maybe, maybe less cinnamon, more just black pepper. It's so tingly and spicy in your mouth. It dries you out. It's definitely one of the more aggressive whiskeys that I own. Um, it's actually numbing on the inside of the mouth, but I don't dislike this at all. Like it's got a time and a place. And before I thought it was too thin and just too one dimensional, but it's really starting to open up. I'm going to put a little water in it and just see what happens. Kind of proof it down and see. Oh, this is an interesting comment. Um, Wigmaster says, are there any scotches that have absolutely zero smoke notes? Yeah, a lot. Actually, the majority of scotch doesn't have smoke notes. But people tend to get introduced to scotch in one of two ways. One would be a blend. So all, like, all the Johnny Walker blends are going to have some element of peat and it's an accessible price for like Johnny Red or Johnny Black. But when you taste that peat and you can't deal with it, you get turned off. Or some people try to push Isla Scotch on you, which is stupid. You know, they shouldn't do that. But if you go to some of the Highland Scotches that aren't coastal or some of the Speyside Scotches, I say Highland, not coastal, because, you know, Klein Leash, um, Dalwini, some of these other ones. They're not necessarily peated to that degree, but there's a little bit of smokiness in there. Whereas, like, if you go to, like, a Glen Morangy, um, Glen Farkless, Glendronic, these are Highland Scotches that have zero peat in them, and they're delicious. And uh, if, especially if you go to some space side, you're going to get sweeter notes, maybe some more nutty almond-type notes. So, yeah, absolutely, they're, they are out there. I hate it. Yeah. And it makes sense. You would hate Johnny Black. That's got a nice bit of peat in there, along with just sort of like middle of the road barley sugars and malty notes, especially from the Crag and more the Crag and more that's in that blend. You're really tasting a lot of the Crag and more in there. And then um, I think Colila is the peated stuff that you're tasting. So you're not getting quite the medicinal peat smoke of a Laphroaig or something like that, but it's still probably going to overwhelm any beginner's palate unless they want that smokiness. Sorry, that's my little rant there. So I would say if I were you, approach some of the Glen Morangy stuff. Um, Glen Livet, pretty solid choice there. Just make sure you don't get one that says peated on the front. But like a Glen Livet 12, Glen Morangy 10, these are great options for you to check out as you kind of, you know, dip your toe into other avenues. So, yeah, good. Glen Morangy is that's that's my go to for everybody in the beginner stages. Um, yeah, I'm looking up at my scotch now. That would probably be my recommendation. Yep. Um, the other really cool ones that I've been messing with recently, Glen Grant 15, the 50% ABV. That's a super solid bottle. Um, Tomatin 14, Port Cask. That's a really sweet, great one for people. Tomatin 14. So, yeah. Anyways, I love, I love scotch, and I can't wait to make more scotch videos here soon.
All right, so this thing is softened up now with a little bit of water. Tons of vanilla icing notes. The caramel is now more exposed. When you proof it down, it gets less aggressive and the caramel start to shine through. That's nice. Oh, I might have proofed it down 5% too much. That is, that's damn good. I might actually be proofing my Alberta premium down just a bit every time I drink it now based on that. Absolutely incredible. So, all right, so two to one now. Alberta premium is a hitter. Ezra 99, halfway changed my mind there. Larson A121 is still a hot mess. So I am absolutely donezo with, with the Larceny barrel proof releases until someone says, holy shit, we have to get this one. Then then I might take another a look at that, you know. Buna Haben 12, great non-peated. Yeah, it is. Buna 12 is a really interesting one for me. Um, for whatever reason, and I've never had any of the uh, higher age stated versions of it. So I'd be curious to try those, but I really like the 12 year. If that's representative of the distillery characteristic, I can only imagine what happens when it gets older. I would love to try that. Balvini 12 double wood for my first scotch, the jury's still out. Yeah, you know, here's the other thing if and Mr. Whiskey shits, you know, give me a little bit more background too after I say this, but there are two notes in scotch that I think people don't like as beginners. One is peat and the other is heavy sherry influence because I think it's hard to understand sherry because or sherry influence because what you need to first understand is the actual base spirit. Like you need to understand the ex-bourbon matured version of that scotch before you go to a sherry finish. Then you can go, oh, now I understand how this with an extra two years in the cask or whatever has been now transformed into this. Um, the Glenmorangie 10 to Glenmorangie La Santa, great representation of that. But like a lot of the double casking or double wood finishes like the Balvenie or the Macallan, I think in some cases it's hard for people to get into because you're not even getting a, a sherry bomb. You're just getting this mingling of sherry and ex-bourbon casks and things like that. And I think it can be hard to approach. So that I, I tend to not point people in that direction. I go with Glenmorangie or Glenlivet first and then start to bring in some additional maturations of those with finishing casks. Then you can move into lightly peated stuff. That's kind of my avenue, you know? Dude, it is just no. It's shit. It's not a good whiskey. Um, I don't know what else to say. And I'm being, I feel like I'm being nice to it right now, too. I really tried to like it. I only put it next to the A120. But if you put this thing next to... Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Bardstown Discovery, looking at my shelf right now, any Knob Creek product, <laughs> you know, like any like 120 proof pick or single barrel, a Russell's pick, which is at the same price point, all of those blow this Larceny Barrel Proof A121 out of the water. So I don't know, man. I've seen Mash and Drum recommend the Buna 12. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, for me, it's a little bit niche in some ways, but... A lot of people, that's their gateway into scotch, and I, I, I completely understand that. Just stay away from, like, Cuddy Sark or, like, some of the really cheap blends. If you're going to go with a blend, some of the Dewar stuff is approachable. Um, Chivas tends to be a little sweet for me, but I like the Dewar stuff. I like all the Aberfeldy stuff as well, which is the same kind of thing with, as Dewar's, uh, same parent company there. Way too much peanut on the A121. Like peanut shell dropped in a pile of dust. Makes me sad because I like the other batches. Yeah. For me, like the peanut is getting a little bit lighter right now, but maybe it's because I've been drinking other peanut heavy whiskeys um, in the last 45 minutes. But yeah. Glenlivet 12 had too much smoke. Interesting. Yeah. I think Glenmorangie is definitely the way to go and, and following that kind of a path. Um, interesting. Yeah. Compass Box is a, is the best, probably one of the best blends, yeah. It's it's really transparent. They give you the exact percentages of things and what they've put in there and how they've recasked it and all that stuff. Um, the Spice Tree is amazing, the Oak Cross. Oak Cross is decent, but the Spice Tree is freaking killer as like an everyday option at 55 bucks a bottle. When you get into some of the other releases, uh, like Hedonism, Spaniard, different things like this, haven't had too much experience with those, but Spice Tree is solid. There might be a little peat on the Spice Tree, I can't remember, but there's definitely sherry influence 
and Christmas spice from the sherry casks. Yeah, Lido, totally agree with that. All right, last sip of the Alberta Premium here. Mm. It's like a fruit cup. It's like a fruit cup in a glass drizzled with like maple syrup and honey, especially once you proof it down, and vanilla icing. That is freaking amazing. I would encourage all of you to try to proof your Alberta Premium down between like 58 and 60% as opposed to the 66 that we have on the bottle. To me, that is just a more balanced sip. I know it's not going to numb your palate like <laughs> like the uh, the bottle uncut would, but I like it cut down just a bit. Macallan 12, I do like Macallan 12 um, at 80 bucks. Let me think, yeah, 75, 80 bucks for a Macallan 12 Sherry Oak. I'm going to tell someone to instead pay a couple more dollars and go get a Glendronic 15. Uh, because I think the sherry cask quality of the Glendronic is better. I think the Macallan sherry cask quality is has declined over the last 20 years. I tried a 2002 bottling of Macallan 12. Completely different story. It was so much better than what we have today. So um, a lot of these companies now, I can't speak for Macallan exactly, are using sherry rinsed barrels, right? So it's just like a cheap substitute for true sherry casks. And a lot of these sherry casks also from my Akintosh and three wood, same thing. Like it's not a sherry rinsed cask, I don't think, but it's a sulfured sherry cask. And so it tastes like crap. It's, it's a sulfured whiskey, which is not good. Um, so those casks clearly were not taken care of in transit and the whole process of drawing them out and everything like that. Yeah, for me, I'm really sensitive to peanuts because it's just a really specific flavor for me. But a lot of people like peanuts, and they don't mind any of these peanut-heavy whiskeys. So, I don't know. 100 on the Glendronic over Macallan. Yeah. Yeah, like Glendronic for me is is some of the best sherried scotch on the market. Uh, market. Glen Farkless, once you hit that 21-year and up age, I, my, my sweet spot for Glen Farkless is 25. 180 bucks, not so bad for a 25-year-old. If you get a Glen Farkless 25... Not as heavy of sherry. It's a ton of refill casks in there, but damn, it is some leather-heavy sherried whiskey that I love. Yeah, you're paying for the Macallan name. Um, I try to do this every six months at minimum, but I think like with the pandemic, I honestly have just kind of forgotten about it, even though I had all the time in the world to do it. So yeah, I like to rotate them at least every six months, but... I used to try to do it like every three. Basically, like I would think of it and go, yeah, I'm just going to do that. But now with 200 plus bottles, it's like more of a task, <laughs> you know? Um, and I broke a cork the other day in my John J. Bowman on a live stream a few weeks ago. And I think that's because I just haven't wet the corks, you know? So also those corks are kind of prone to that, I think. Same same with like the 1792 stuff. <laughs> Take a bath in peanuts. All right, um, I'm going to pour one more. I'm going to pour another dram here, guys, because... You know, we got 30 in the chat. We're hanging. I don't want to call this just yet, so I'm going to rinse this glass here with a little bit of water. Do a couple water shots. Pour one more whiskey, and then we'll call it a day. How's that? Yeah, uh, Johnny. for me, Johnny Walker Black, if I go, like, uh, if I go to Vegas... When I'm gambling at the tables, Johnny Walker Black is what I always have them bring me, you know? Tip them five bucks, get a Johnny Black. I'll drink that stuff all night. I love it. Um, but the Johnny Green, actually, for those of you in the chat, Johnny Walker Green for me is a, a hell of a blend. It's the only blended malt scotch. There's no grain whiskey in there. 15-year age stated. More peat than the black, but a super solid blend. Yeah, and Trev, man, I'm the same. I'm the same as you. So I hope when Matt Porter sends us um, uh, the blind that we're going to do on March 5th, I hope there's not a ton of nutty whiskey in there. We should, we, <laughs> you know, because like, I just can't do the nuts either. I'm not, I don't like nuts very much, Trev, unfortunately. Oh, Rick in the house. Cheers. Good to see you, man. Um, I would pay to see this. Uh, I would pay to see this. Someone bathing in peanuts. Like like in a Texas Roadhouse barrel, you know? You're just like in there with all the peanuts surrounding you. Um, let me grab uh, one last pour. What are we going to do here? 
how about this? Let's do something interesting. Uh, let me grab this for you. I thought about going to scotch, but I don't really want, I don't want to break my streak here. So let's try this. Unless you have a better idea, I have this old bottling of old Ezra 7. And since I tried this, um, this Ezra Brooks 99 here, I figured we could try this old Ezra 7 because I picked this up in Indianapolis and haven't really given it a, a go yet. The cork is somewhat falling apart in the bottle. Some fragments. I'm going to be drinking just a little bit of cork here, but that's okay. But why not try this and see what it's all about? <laughs> yeah, I would love to get a new cork for that and decant this stuff and get those particles out of there. Um, I'm honestly scared of what, I'm also scared of what Matt's going to do to us. <laughs> I hope it's all like good. Like, I hope Matt doesn't just give us a bunch of terrible whiskey. That would be funny. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. I always hear about it on B Marks. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, I was wondering about this. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so this is the old bottling of Old Ezra 7. I don't know. I want to say this is 2015. That's what it looks like. A15 here on like the bottling code. So I'd have to assume 2015. Maybe you guys know a little bit more about this. This was before my time. I turned 21 in 2015. So I definitely wasn't drinking this stuff. But I think I snagged this for maybe like 30 bucks off the shelf, collecting dust in a hole in the wall liquor store. Oh, that's pretty nice. Whoa, totally different. Do you guys know anything about this old bottling? Like, is this still a Lux Row product? Um, I don't. I don't know much about it. Yeah, definitely some floaters in there. That makes me a little bit worried. Should you not drink whiskey if there's particles floating all in it? <laughs> I see people talk about sediment and stuff like that. This has a really oaky profile right on the nose here. It's you know seven year age stated. Hmm. Oh, weird. Whoa. The um. The nose here makes you think it's gonna be like rich and viscous, and the mouthfeel is pretty pretty darn thin here. The nose is incredible. The nose is like um. Here's the deal. I like peanut butter in whiskey. I don't like peanut shell. This is like creamy peanut butter and oak all the way on the nose oh yes guys i'm gonna enjoy that protein and fiber in here <laughs> that's hilarious a nice amount of spice a nice amount of alcohol punch on the nose there's like some caramel caramelized apple in here some cherry notes wow i mean the nose is phenomenal on this old ezra 7 but the palate is like night and day difference whoa this is nothing like today's old Ezra 7 tons of oak funk on the back end now and uh and like some honey notes in here but like dark darker honey the Ezra 99 had like kind of a light watery honey profile this is Dark honey, peanut butter, oak on the palate, but a crazily different mouthfeel than you would expect. It's really thin. I just wish I could smell this whiskey all day, but not drink it. <sighs> wow. Okay, so that is totally different. I'm going to need to look up some reviews here of this old product and and just see like what people thought of it at the time. The proof here is 101 proof, which is much lower than Old Ezra 7, I believe. I don't know where my Old Ezra 7 is. But I think that's like 114 maybe or something like that. So this is definitely a lower proof. Yeah. Wow. All right. So there you have it. This Old Ezra 7 old bottling. If you can find one for 20, 30 bucks, I would totally snag this. 
Burben says, any food must-haves along I-71? I know this is so bourbon related. That's funny. Um, are you looking to sit down somewhere? I don't want you to text and drive a ton, but are you looking to sit down somewhere or are you just looking for some fast food? I'm, I'm trying to think of what's on 71. I, I used to drive 71 a lot to go up. I used to teach. Um, I was a, a professor at Kent State University up, up near Cleveland. So I'd drive two and a half hours a couple days a week to teach up there. Um, but like I would just stop off at this, at this rest station at the Ashland Worcester exit, I think is what it was. And I would just get uh, Starbucks, a little Taco Bell burrito, use the bathroom. <laughs> that was my halfway point on the way up. So um, trying to think about like some, some food stops on 71. When you get into Columbus, the Polaris exit, Polaris Parkway, which is just north of the Columbus Outer Belt 270. If you stop off there, there's some really great stuff. I don't know since the pandemic what's open and what's not, but Chili Verde is off of that exit. They have a killer breakfast burrito that is served all day. That is a Chili Verde for me. If you like, um, if you like Mexican food, great spot to to stop off at. But the breakfast burrito for me is just phenomenal. So, oh, quick grab. That's something local. Yeah, in terms of local quick grabs, I I don't really know. You're probably going to be stuck with fast food, but. That Polaris exit is going to have a lot of good stuff if you can wait that long. That's probably going to be another hour, hour and a half for you, I would think. Mm. So is it the consensus then that this old bottling of Old Ezra 7, is this still Lux Row or Lux Co? I don't really know the history of this brand. Um, if it is, it makes a lot of sense to me, but again... It's just uh, got a little more oak profile, a little more aged whiskey, a little more quality than today's products, in my opinion. Oh, man. No worries. No worries. It's cool that you're popping through, uh, coming through Columbus. Old Ezra 101 was discontinued and replaced by Nicholson Reserve. Interesting. And yeah, you said it. Uh, Hector says it is a 117 proof. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Well... I think that's about it, guys. I am content here. I don't want to keep drinking on this Sunday afternoon. Um, I've got some stuff to do today, so I need to be coherent for all of that. I need to go practice, but here's the deal. Um, we've got 23 likes on the video, 26 in the chat. Before we get off here, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, that would be awesome. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, it tends to be about 25% of my live viewers haven't subscribed. So if you're on here and you haven't, it would help so much as I'm continuing to build the channel, build the community um, around drums and drams, on the road to monetization, moving very quickly along, which is great. But like I said at the beginning of this stream, my Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A121 review is going to be dropping like in the next hour, maybe hour and 15 if the upload speeds are slow. I just have to hit the upload button and make a thumbnail right now. So that's what's going on. So check out around... 5 p.m. in about an hour, that new Elijah Craig A121 review. Let me know what you think. If you've had that pour, be very curious. It's not far off a Larceny A121, if I'm being honest with you. It's not as much of a disappointment. But compared to some of the other batches of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which are total hitters, this one, I don't know. I would love to hear some, some opinions. And I'm going to be doing another Second Chance Sunday in a few weeks for that bottle and for a couple of other bottles that have reviews coming up. So that's pretty much all I've got. And I'm going to jump off here because I need to go digest some notes into my brain for this concert one month from today, doing a world premiere of a brand new percussion concerto. And I'm going to have a little bit more content about that on the channel, just kind of talking about what I do musically. More drums than drams. That's on its way in the next month. So check the chat one last time. Oh, yeah, Raising Cane's Chicken. That's a good one if you've never had it. Uh, Bourbon. And uh, definitely curious, might have that alongside. Let's see. Cheers. Can't wait to see what Amy has. Oh, yeah. Solid call, Trev. Sorry, man. I'm so bad at this, right? What night is that? Wednesday night before Mash and Drum live stream. Trev and I are pre-gaming with a blind flight from Amy Bohm. So come check that out. All my pours are back there. That's going to be a really, really good time. And then on March 5th, which is a Friday, I'm going to be live with Trev uh, on Matt Porter's channel, ADHD Whiskey. That's going to be great. If, you, if I haven't given you enough announcements yet, March 4th, 
is typically my Thursday night. I will not be live streaming on that night. I have a rehearsal with an orchestra that night for this new percussion uh, solo concerto. So I won't be able to live stream that night. The next night on Matt's channel will have to do. All right. Beautiful. Thank you all so much. I'm out of here. Have a good rest of your Sunday and come back in like an hour or so. Come check out that Elijah Craig video. Cheers, everybody.